Hello and welcome. I'm Kathleen Aller from Inner Systems, and I'm here to talk about building resilient and responsive health information infrastructure. This topic was suggested by the events of this past year, this past few months. At the beginning of the year, my calendar was marked to fly to Helsinki at the end of May. Instead, I'm speaking to you from Maryland in the United States. There's a meme made famous by the, the British comedy troupe Monty Python's Flying Circus. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Well, nobody expected the pandemic and global meltdown we've experienced either. Or did they? The global consultancy firm McKinsey has done some research looking back at the 2008 financial crisis. What they found was that there was a small group of companies in each sector, each industry sector, that outperformed their peers. Those were organizations that got hurt. Their revenues fell about the same as everybody else's, but they recovered much faster. By 2009, those resilient company earnings had risen 10% that of the non-resilient companies had gone down almost 15 percent. What characterized those resilient companies? Well, I would say that they prepared for the expected unexpected. They prepared before the crisis by ensuring their balance sheet was in good shape, that they had redundancies in their supply chain, that they had an infrastructure for IT that would power them through the crisis. Preparing is the action or process of making something ready for use or service. Okay, that's straightforward. We understand that. With preparation, one of the results is that you're able to be responsive. It's the quality of reacting quickly and positively. Reacting to good, reacting to bad. And finally, resiliency. It's a lagging indicator. It's the ability to absorb a shock and recover. So it takes time to see whether an organization is resilient. There are many ways you can prepare for shock. That's a word we tend to think of negatively. Today I'd like to focus on preparing strategic health information assets. If we think about it, shock actually can be either positive or negative. A business change, such as a merger or acquisition, may be great for the acquiring company. It may be negatively shocking to the company that was acquired and to the employees of that company. Discovery may be something as exciting and as life-changing as, as uh, the introduction of penicillin and other antibiotics. It can be a new innovation, a new drug, a new therapy, a new idea. We have natural disasters, fire, flood, earthquake, volcanic eruptions. They disrupt behaviors, they disrupt travel and supply chains. They create new healthcare demands. Regulatory models may change and force new acquisitions. They may require new safety gear or new software. New government policies may create business opportunities or destroy others. New clinical models may require information sharing that hasn't happened in the past. And of course, we don't yet know the full impact of the global pandemic we're currently experiencing. What I'd like to do for the remainder of this session is look at three different organizations that have used information infrastructure to build organizational responsiveness and resilience. Two are in the US, one is in England. And I'd like to start with a group called Manifest Medics. Manifest Medics is based in San Francisco, California. It describes itself as being on a mission to connect healthcare. They're a nonprofit utility to get health information out of silos. The group is led by Claudia Williams, who's the CEO. 
She was previously a health policy expert with the Obama administration, and you'll hear her talk about that in this video that I'm going to show. Manifest MedX is California's health information network, the foundational longitudinal community health record. We connect healthcare providers, health plans, and hospitals for over 19 million people to improve care, enhance health, and lower costs. One of the things that is unique about our history is that we bring together leaders on the provider side and on the health plan side, because they equally need that data and insight backbone to provide the best possible care in either of those settings. The motivation was always to try and um, break down these barriers and these walls so that we could make healthcare truly digital. If you want to use some kind of technology, artificial intelligence, say, for clinical decision support, right now you have to go into each electronic medical record system and try to implement that tool in that system and then go to the next locale and do the same thing. One of my first uh, tasks as a CEO was to lay out our strategy for creating impact. And what became clear very quickly is that we needed a technology infrastructure that could scale with our ambitions. Inner Systems was the perfect partner that provided that scalability, dependability, and joint mission. As we looked at our needs to uh, solve the problem of population health, HBI was a perfect partner because they had both experience with the data types and to bring the kinds of data, whether those are claims or clinical data in. And really they have a research tested approach to predicting risk and then present the data in very usable and user-friendly kinds of ways to our participants. I'm excited that we're starting to roll that out to our participants. And you should see that eyes light up when they see their ADT feed turned into an insight about population health and risk. Because to them, that was just a data feed. When I worked at the White House, I spent a lot of time with startups and I would come out to this area, to Silicon Valley, and meet with startups that were really excited about working in healthcare. And if they were 18 months in, what you would start to hear is the frustration of how long it took, let's say with a large delivery system, to try their product. And then it might take 18 months later to actually start to get the data and get the tool to work. Well, 36 months into a startup, you have a failed startup if you haven't been able to actually show results. So let's say we have a relationship with a large delivery system. And they could say, sign on the dotted line here. Tomorrow, we can actually start demonstrating results because MX can feed us that data in a predictable way. It takes on average more than 15 years for a new medical discovery to become common practice in healthcare. And the only reason that is is because we've got these walls, these digital walls that prevent barriers and diffusing information and getting it available to the people who are practicing medicine. And if we break those down, we can go from discovery to treatment in a matter of days, not years. And that's the kind of system that we want to build. With our partners, we're enabling a future of quickly scaling innovation, value-based care, and the promise of better health for our communities and families. As you'll have gathered from that video, Manifest Medics was a shared investment by some of the largest payer, provider, and lab organizations in the state. It currently serves about 22 million of the 40 million Californians. They envisioned that this would be a data utility to improve immediate care for individuals, to enhance population health, and most of all, to foster innovation. Claudia spoke during the video about some of the architectural drivers of the system, in particular the need for scalability and for partnership. But there were a number of other characteristics that mattered to them. I've listed them here as examples of characteristics that apply to all information infrastructure that supports preparedness. Paul Markovich mentioned the need to connect and normalize data to eliminate silos. 
that data has to be made accessible to care providers and patients in real time. And it needs to support care in any setting. In other forums, Claudia has talked about the need to embed intelligence in order to help separate the signal from the noise in the information flow. I'll give you an example of that in a moment, but they, one of the things they do heavily is to use alerts about what matters to providers, what matters to patients. She also talked about reusability, how they leverage that foundational health record to power analytics, to power machine learning and insight, to manage care at the population level. Of course, they also needed an adaptable system that would support not only innovation, but to help them be ready for the expected unexpected. In 2020, that unexpected was COVID-19. And so they created a series of lab alerting or notifications to providers that would let them know when new lab results were added to the unified care record in real time. Whatever lab sent the test, it could be reported immediately and the provider alerted. California has been a major COVID hotspot with a number of data challenges, but Manifest Medics was not only ready to respond to the data needs of its members, uh, but also to begin to assist the state as the state discovered that the data capture it was doing in other formats wasn't working well. They'd already created the foundational infrastructure that was needed to move forward. Let's move to the northeast of England and to the county of Lincolnshire. The Lincolnshire Sustainability and Transformation Partnership brings together health and care organizations from across the spectrum of care. And it includes an infrastructure that they've created to support a clinical transformation process that's geared toward creating joined up care and health packages, supporting self-care by the citizens of the county, and to delivering services close to home. Lincolnshire is the fourth largest county in England, and it has a disproportionately frail elderly population with high rates of chronic disease. It's a very rural county, and so home care providers may need to drive a long distance to see their clients. Patients may need to travel a long distance to see providers or to receive acute care. It's easy with those distances for care to become disaggregated and dispersed. In fact, it's easy in almost any health ecosystem for health information to be dispersed. Home care providers have their own record. Hospitals have a record. Patients may keep their own notes. Laboratories and schools and clinics and pharmacies all have their own records. And very few of them talk to one another. And so each part of the health and care ecosystem sees the patient but not clearly. Similarly, health information comes in many formats. You can have images, you can have textual notes, you can have granular and, and very structured test results. We can have genomics data, which is vast and wide. We can have information from systems that have nothing to do with healthcare, but have an impact on the care of a patient. Because that data doesn't match, we get a very distorted view of the patient. What Lincolnshire set about to do was to change the model of care and create transparency across the health and care provider network, to create information sharing, to simplify and streamline access to information. And they did it by creating a unified health and care record centered around the patient, connecting everything together. They bring in data from dozens of systems using legacy standards and proprietary data formats, using FHIR, RESTful APIs, um, bringing in unstructured text, and similarly being able to write that out in all those different formats. But they also layer onto it an integrated provider care portal 
This makes information available in a logical fashion, graphically, easily, uh, with each component easily found. It makes it accessible to every single member of the care team. Likewise, community members have access to a community patient portal that lets them care for themselves and others. It lets them communicate with their provider team. By putting this infrastructure in place, not only was communication and transparency enhanced, but when COVID struck, it gave them a framework to communicate about that. And so they were able to easily and rapidly add uh, alerts about COVID patient uh, COVID status for each patient, make that available and accessible to every member of the care team so that they could adequately prepare and take the right response. Similarly, this will be foundational infrastructure for uh, new coordinated care plans that are multidisciplinary that will be curated by the care team with the assistant of the patient and will help drive care for not only chronic conditions but um, acute conditions like COVID-19 itself. Let's go back to the U.S. and let's consider a third organization. Greater Houston Health Connect serves the city of Houston, Texas. It's the third largest city in the USA and it's home to a group called the Texas Medical Center, which happens to be the largest medical campus on the planet. Texas Medical Center is a couple of square miles, city within a city. It has some of the most prestigious organizations in the world, Houston Methodist, Texas Children's Hospital, MD Anderson Cancer Clinic, Memorial Hermann, and they're all just steps away from each other. Incredibly dense uh, population of providers. Some of them are public, many of them are private, many of them compete with one another. Greater Houston Health Connect is a neutral third party, brings together data from 24 counties, 15 million plus patients, and over a thousand care venues. Brings together data of all types, prescriptions, acute care records, clinical records, lab results, imaging studies, um, history and physical combines them into a single record similar to what we saw at Manifest Medics, similar to what we saw at Lincolnshire. And it serves that up within the natural workflow of providers. Their core services include not only health information exchange to retrieve records from across their, their service area, but similarly a diagnostic imaging exchange. Like Manifest Medics, they provide notifications for at-risk patients and members, letting providers know when a patient has been admitted or discharged or transferred. And in that huge medical campus, where there's a tremendous amount of academic research underway, they provide de-identified data sets for research and quality improvement purposes. They put this information asset in place and they were doing very well in normal care. And then in August of 2017, disaster struck the city of Houston when Hurricane Harvey flooded the entire city. Thousands and thousands of people were displaced and ended up in cots in, in shelter situations. The Greater Houston Health Connect team was able to take laptops down to the shelter and provide access to the records that were currently underwater at individual provider sites. So that patients who were in advanced stages of pregnancy or had chronic conditions could be treated with full and accurate care records because the infrastructure was in place for the expected unexpected. To summarize, with the right health information infrastructure, you have a strategic investment that provides a foundation for organizational resiliency. It ensures you can respond rapidly to change, whether that change is good or bad. 
you'd like to learn more about building strategic health information infrastructure for your organization, we'd love to have you meet us at the InterSystems booth, and we'd love to have you talk to our experts. I'd like to close with one final video, and I thank you for your time today. Responsiveness has never mattered more than it does today. Healthcare organizations are partnering with InterSystems to find timely solutions for evolving health crises. From getting an electronic medical record system live in just one week at a new hospital in Rome, to helping the world's largest HIE develop COVID-19 specific instant alerts in New York City, our creative technology solutions support today's most vital frontline efforts around the world. Because our partners are doing the work that matters most right now, and they're doing it with the help of InterSystems.